Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Sunday message on November 18th. Our theme for the year is What Are You Afraid Of? Our theme scripture comes from 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And our theme that we're talking about for the month of November is God's reality regarding our situations. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for you are powerful and mighty. And Lord God, we thank you and ask that you give us a spirit of power and help us, Lord, to hold on to what you have told us is true in your word. Now give us the strength and the courage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Reading from Romans 8, verse 34 through 40. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall troubles or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a powerful scripture. And why did I want us to talk about this today? Well, today we're talking about the situations in our lives. Sometimes we are faced with some situations that are difficult. They hard. They press in on us. You know, we we are dealing with the forces that are trying to stop us and to condemn us. And we know that even in this entire scripture in Romans 8, that it talks about living the life through the spirit and that there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And it also just talks about present suffering and future glory. And so we have to consider the things that we're going through now, we have to consider them as they are in line with the things of God for not only right now, but our future and what God has for us. And so for you and I, it's easy sometimes to look at right what's right in front of us and get discouraged. And one of the things I talked about when we first started these messages back in August was what God was showing me about this thing called fear. He was showing me that for example, if today you don't have finances or your finances are short, he was showing me that if we focus on that lack, then what happens, it becomes a stronghold. We can only see the lack. But what God wants us to know is that's just the natural. That's what's happening in the natural. But if we focus just right here, right in front of us on the natural, we miss what God is telling us to hope for. We miss the future. We miss that spiritual reality, if you will, that he has for us. And so in the spirit realm, that which was a lack, it's like a hologram and I can go in and out and I can go through it. So it does not hinder me. I can still do those things that I need to do. So I have to line my, my thinking that sound mind, I got to line my thinking up. I got to line my power up. I got to line everything up to dwell within that spiritual reality. And at some point, what God is doing in the spirit realm and what's happening in the natural will come together and we'll be able to see it. But we have to not allow what we see to just make us focus on that because then we miss understanding the anointing and the power and the freedom that we have. And I believe that's really what is going on in the scripture. It's really asking the question, you know, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Troubles, persecution, famine, nakedness, is any of that going to stand in the way of us being able to be fully who God called us to be? It doesn't have to be. It only will be if we allow it to be. And so one of the things it says, and I, and, and so we have to take this mindset that verse 30, it said, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels, demons, the present, the future, no power, no height, no death, not anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And not only will it not be able to separate us from the love, but I think it's, I need to take that a little bit deeper. If it won't separate us from the love, then it won't separate us also from the benefits of that love. So what God's saying about our situation as another scripture, second Timothy four sixteen said in my first defense at my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me may it be not held against them. This is Paul was saying when others deserted him, when he went before Nero, 
I brought that scripture out simply for this reason. Part of the reason that we can dwell in love, because we're talking about, you know, having a sound mind and love. See, we got to still love folks that may not stand with you in the midst of your trials and your tribulations. Paul said nobody supported him, but he was okay because he realized that he did have support. God was with him. See, man may not be able to stand up in my situation or your situation, but we can't let that make us bitter and angry. And then that becomes our focus because that's all the enemy wants to do. He wants us to constantly focus on lesser things. We can't focus on the, you know, my brother, my sister, my, you know, my coworker, somebody wasn't there to support me. We have to say, you know what, Lord? I'm glad that you never leave me, nor do you forsake me. Revelations 12, 11 said, They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. That's really what God is asking you and I to do today. He's saying that we will be we will be triumphant, not only here and now, but there's an eternal place we're trying to get to. But it's not that we have to wait to the sweet by and by to be triumphant. We can be triumphant even right now and part of it is by the words of our testimony you know sometimes when you share the testimony you hear what some god is doing for somebody else that will give you an encouragement so that you don't shrink back that you keep moving forward even if death is what you are facing whatever you face it you'll be able to face it knowing that god is with you ephesians 1 21 said Far, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. God, Jesus is the ultimate source of power that we have. Because Colossians 1, 16 says, for in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And see, I just, I'm telling you these scriptures because we need to be reminded sometimes who we're trusting in. Who we're trusting. Ephesians 6, 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. God wants us to be reminded that when we go through these struggles, when we face with these different things in our lives, that we're not facing, we're not fighting a physical fight. It's a spiritual warring that we're doing. It's a warring in the spirit that we're doing. And when we're warring the spirit, we know that we're fighting against those things that will try to keep us down, but we're already victorious. Why? We already know that God is going to do it. That's what Stephanie 317 said. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you. He will rejoice over you with sin. I just like it said, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. God will save us from those situations that come against us. And see, when we understand what these scriptures are talking about, that God is with us, that Jesus is the power that we need through his Holy Spirit, we can stand. Then we'll be able to have that conviction that Paul had and said, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height, death, anything that's created, will be able to separate us from the love of God. And I just want to add, my understanding is, not only will it not separate me from God's love, but in my situations, it will also bring about the benefits of what I can receive from one that loves me. Because when you love somebody, you do everything in your power for them to know that they love. You do everything in their power to make sure that their needs are met. And that's what God will do for us. In our situations, he will make sure that our needs are met. He will make sure that we are strong for whatever faces us. And he will be there with us. No matter if it's trouble, persecution, good time, bad time, he's there with you always. So my question to you is, what are you afraid of? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We ask that right now in the name of Jesus that you would help somebody facing some tragedy, some difficulty to know that you are with them and that your love and all that your love offer is available to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.